Hello, I'm Terry Moran. We've got some breaking news here on ABC News Live. Attorneys who are representing some of the five Memphis police officers charged with second-degree murder for the death of Tyree Nichols are speaking now. Let's listen in to their attorneys. Uh, to the public has been released to us. We uh, the next step will be that we officially sign on as lawyers for for these defendants, and that triggers the beginning of the discovery process. So sometime in the near future, uh, we will get not only what's released to the public, but but everything else, uh, every single angle out there, every interview, uh, every piece of paper uh, that the state has, they will have to turn over to us. Counsel, so the can difference you in the bond your clients were part of the Scorpion unit. Yes, I can confirm that uh, Mr. Mills was part of the Scorpion unit. And you, Mr. Massey? Yes, I can confirm Mr. Martin was part of the Scorpion unit. There's a difference in the bond amount between your two clients, but the charges are identical. Any thoughts or explanation there? Again, we're without information to answer a lot of these questions. So, so at this point, you're just clueless of what's going on. With, with the whole thing, because you, you don't have any answers for us right now, because you haven't reviewed the video, you just know just bits and pieces, just like many of us. The state yes. and the TBI evidently have the answers right now that you uh, want to know the answer to, the questions you want to know the answer to, and uh, we're without information to answer the questions. Yes, sir. So I object I to the characterization of clueless. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, you know, obviously we have, have uh, I don't want to speak for Mr. Massey, but have spoken with our clients. Um, we obviously have started to think about potential defenses. We are getting to know our clients. Um, you know, I've spent some time with uh, Desmond Mills and uh, have learned a lot about his background. And uh, what I've learned so far is that he is uh, known not only here locally, but back where he's from in Connecticut as uh, just a, a gentle, respectful um, father, a family man. I actually spoke with some of his family members today. His his father, who talked about his own admiration for his son, uh, as somebody who's dedicated his life to, to being a law enforcement officer. And not only is, is Mr. Mills obviously devastated to find himself charged with a crime, but uh, as somebody who is on the other side of law enforcement, somebody who has, has been in charge of, of keeping our community safe, to be accused of something like this hurts him on another level. Do you either have prior experience in any law, law enforcement departments? Uh, Desmond Mills does. He, uh, well, not law enforcement, but he uh, has been a jailer mm -hmm. both in Mississippi and Tennessee. I understand attorney-client privilege, but can you kind of talk about their disposition today? So, Bill, I'll let you <laughs> answer that one first. Well, any time a police officer is going to jail, it's a traumatic moment. And so he was experiencing that this morning. Uh, I surrendered him to the TBI this morning, and uh, he had resolved himself and moved forward. It's hard to know with, uh, with anybody, but especially with somebody uh, like Mr. Mills, who is very pretty mild-mannered, very respectful. He has put on a, a very strong facade, but I know underneath it all, this is causing him and his family a lot of anxiety. Um, and a lot of pain, um, not only for his own situation, but for what uh, this kind of uh, accusation, what this kind of incident is doing to our city. Um, so we are concerned. Uh, I, I know I'm concerned not only as a, a lawyer for my client's safety, but for uh, for this community and the, you know the frustrations that uh, exist in this community, especially with these kinds of events. Um, so with that in mind, talking about um, turning them in and. Uh, we do appreciate how law enforcement has cooperated with us and with our clients in making sure that they were able to turn themselves in safely, that they are safe within the jail, and that they will be released safely. Um, so uh, I know that Mr. Mills is posting his bond. He is in the process of being uh, let out. Um, and that will be, a, we, are, we are now at the very beginning of what will be a long process. Yes. So can I ask you, Sheriff, and um, if Mr. Mills has said anything about and the family and, and, and what happened. Well, so when, when you talk about what happened, that is obviously something I can't talk about at this point. Uh, of you know, course. Video of it? Like, have you been able to see the video? No, uh, they have not let uh, anybody see the video. Um, we're hearing that's going to be released soon, and we'll be, we'll be watching, obviously, with the, you know, from a different angle, but we will certainly be watching as well.
Mr. Bassett, is your client has a bond out plan as well? The first question is has anyone else spoken about hiring a home for the family or said anything about condolences even for the family? He could not be more upset about this entire situation. Um, again, somebody who has dedicated his life to protecting society, to protecting the community, to be accused of being involved in the death of another is, is devastating to him. Um, we have not had a conversation specifically about Mr. Nichols, but knowing Mr. Mills and the kind of person he is, uh, I, I cannot imagine that he has anything other than uh, feelings of, of, of grief for this family who has lost somebody. Uh, I understand we are defense lawyers. We are representing uh, people accused of, of causing somebody else's death. Uh, but that doesn't mean that uh, we're not aware of the fact that, that there is a lot of pain uh, from the Nichols family and in this community. So we and our clients, uh, again, not to speak for Mr. Massey, but I know uh, I and, and my client, Mr. Mills, are well aware of that. Uh, all of us are. I think all of us are. And, you know, the state has had this matter indicted, and there are numerous allegations made against all of the officers. And I watched the conference today. I thought um, General Mulroy did a very nice job of, of presenting uh, his side to the media. Um, and he asked for justice. And we agree. Justice means following the law. And the law says that no one is guilty until a jury says they're guilty. And so that's, that's a process, and that's going to take a long time. Eventually, the state will be able to place their case in front of a jury, a group of citizens from the community. And if they have sufficient proof, that jury will say guilty. And if they do not have sufficient proof, that jury will say not guilty. At this point, we don't know what proof they have because we've not seen, we do not have discovery, and we've not seen the video. So we're kind of in the blind right now, and this process is just starting. Mr. Martin, can you explain to us if uh, your client is bonding out today as well, and have you had your initial conversation with your client? Certainly. I spent the week with him. <laughs> Similar, your description of him, and, and is it the same at his time as a police officer? How's he responding to all this? There is no way. I, no one out there that night intended for Tyree Nichols to die. Tyree Nichols to die. No one. No one. And is he bonding And that's shocking. Today? That's shocking to the officers. It's shocking. I would just imagine police officers have a very difficult and dangerous job, and sometimes a thankless job. And it's probably one of their worst fears that something like this would happen on their watch. Uh, gentlemen, it's shocking. I'm sorry to interrupt. Gentlemen, both of you are experienced lawyers here. Um, this city hasn't seen anything like this with five officers uh, being charged at one time. Um, what would you say about the, the meaning of it in a historical context, this case, what it means to the city of Memphis, and, you know, any observations as to, you know, now Memphis is going to be a spotlight in terms of police reform and brutality, anything you can say about that? I think the public will get to see how the justice system works in Memphis and Shelby County. And I would say that... Uh, Sometimes you can find a silver lining in any tra tragic situation and you ask about police reform and whether these individual officers, officers committed a crime or did anything wrong uh, is certainly something that, that will be talked about and looked into uh, for the next few months, if not longer. Uh, but talking about the idea of police reform, any time you have a, a catalyst to make your community better, even if it if it's, comes out of a tragedy, uh, that's all you can hope for, right? That as a result of uh, a tragic death, whether it's a criminal death or not, uh, loss of, of, of life is a tragedy. And uh, if this brings about change that helps move our community in the right direction, 
uh, maybe that can be a silver lining to what ultimately uh, has obviously started as, as not only a tragedy for, for Mr. Nichols and his family, but also for a very trying experience for, for my client, Mr. Mills. What's Mr. Mills' bond? It is uh, 250000 Mr. Martin? 350000 Emmett with one T or two, there's confusion there. Emmett, one T or two? Two. Two. Thank you. Gentlemen, can you tell us if your clients plan on pleading not guilty? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Attorneys Valen Madison, you all have a history of taking on high profile cases in this city and historically getting pre people pretty solid deals. Um, when they signed on to you, why did you choose to take on these clients for this case? We're both defense lawyers, and I think we're both uh, believe very strongly in what we do. Everybody deserves a defense. Um, Mr. Mills is a man. My client, um, Martin, is a man as well, and they deserve a defense, and that's why we're here. Now, you really didn't specify, you know, who were the three officers that intervened and the one that actually committed the crime. Were your clients one of the ones that intervened? We haven't seen the video yet. We don't have the discovery yet. Yeah. How will the video impact your process moving forward and how you defend these men. So, I think I've, I've said this before and maybe it was to you yesterday about how there's uh, a, a very visceral reaction to, to videos like this and I have not seen this one but uh, unfortunately we've all over the last couple of years seen videos uh, where there's police brutality involved. And so uh, I would just caution the public to reserve judgment. Uh, you're going to feel things, you're going to uh, experience emotions, uh, but know that there's always more to the story. And although there's been a, a promise to release a video, I don't know how many angles, I don't know uh, from whose perspective this video will, will, will show the incident, but uh, there is always more to the story. And we are always, as defense lawyers, up against uh, the, the fact that the state goes first. The state gets out ahead of us, and they release the information, and they get started painting uh, defendants in a, in a negative light. And so we're always playing catch-up. So I would just remind each and every person out there watching, listening, uh, to view this with an understanding that there is more to the story, that we will do our own investigation, that we will gather information from the state that's not available to the public, and when it's time to defend our clients, our side of things will come out. City officials are bracing for unrest. Are your clients concerned for their safety? I've not discussed that with my client. I, I mean, but I have heard the same rumors. So, of course, I would be concerned for anyone in the community's safety. Uh, we hope that everyone's voice is heard, but heard in a peaceful manner. Can I ask you a question about um, the director of... Uh, the TBI, and he said some really uh, condemning things. He said he was grieved, he was shocked, he was sickened by what happened. It's absolutely appalling, and then went on to say what happened here does not at all reflect proper policing. This was wrong, this was criminal. When you heard that, what did you think, and have your clients heard all of the charges against them? I thought, I wish I'd seen that video so I could evaluate what he said. Um, we will see it soon, and until we're able to see it, I really can't comment on it. Have I don't know. ever heard something that strong coming from the director of the TBI? Yes. Mm -hmm. And what did you think? What I, what I thought when I heard that was that um, law enforcement, uh, that uh, our, our district attorney's office, they have a duty to make sure that not only are they prosecuting crimes, but they're doing it ethically, that they're doing it in a fair manner. And to make those kinds of comments, uh, or before making comments like that, I think people need to think long and hard about uh, what that adds to the story, about how it affects the community in which the case could be tried, and whether he is saying those things for a good purpose, uh, for a, uh, a reason that, uh, that, is, uh, that is proper? Uh, is he saying things to incite 
uh, hatred towards our clients. Uh, there needs to be some, some thought about the way things are characterized when you're talking about a jury pool out there who's going to see and hear those comments. Um, so you know, hopefully uh, going forward, uh, the kind of information and the kind of uh, characterization of of things will keep in mind the idea that that we all both on the defense side and the prosecution side want this process to, the process to play out in a fair way Do you think he's trying to incite hatred against your clients? to say things like that when you have a tender box that we're all concerned about uh, I have questions about whether those were the right words to use whether this was the right timing and whether uh, the government should be saying those things about people who are innocent until proven guilty when you know that's going to be broadcast to potential jurors this this incident occurred in Memphis Shelby County and it should be tried here in Memphis Shelby County um, it makes it more difficult when statements of the nature that Blake just discussed uh, are made to our jury pool. Will you ask for a change of venue then? Will you ask for a change of venue potentially? I do not want to. I do not want to. Memphis, this, this occurred in Memphis. Memphis should sit in the, Memphis is the community that should sit in judgment. But we should have fair jurors. And jurors that hear one side of the story right now uh, form opinions. People just do that. And they're not hearing anything favorable about the officers. And there are many things favorable to say about both. We do have a, a new DA, Mr. Mulroy, so as far as what's customary and, and new, uh, you know, we're learning as you are, but uh, we do know uh, all of the prosecutors involved very well. Uh, have nothing but good things to say about them, and uh, you know, we, uh, as usual, we'll all work together to make sure there's a fair and just outcome. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.